Welcome. In front of me, I have the JBL Authentics 200 uh, speaker, and today I'll go for unboxing. I'll look at a quick listen to the product itself and a look at the design, which, based on the box, looks pretty intricate. So, anyway, let's just get. Uh, into it now before i actually unbox it i do want to touch upon a couple of the things that are listed on the box which are on this other side there we go so uh, we have a superior acoustic design and performance uh, then we have a voice assistant uh, simultaneously uh, Continues on one device assist. Okay, that's different language. Um, with Bluetooth, AirPlay 2, Alexa built in, uh, room music, Spotify connection, and Chromecast built in. So basically, it does every kind of possible um, assistant that you can ever think, have, need. And then we have automatic self tuning. This one actually seems very interesting, though. Um, it doesn't really elaborate on it, so I don't know how that actually works. Now, before I. Before we get to listen to it, I do want to point out that this is a 90 watt speaker and I'll be approaching this from a perspective of a um, Marshall Acton uh, 3 user. So that's uh, my speaker that I use on a daily basis right now and uh, it seems like it's a very similar design and size. So. Uh, I'll kind of be approaching it from that perspective. So this one is, like I said, 90 watts, while the Acton 3 is 60. So this one is putting out more power. Uh, anyway, here we have some warranty, so I'm gonna set that to the side. Next we get... And just paperwork. So I'm gonna, again, set that to the side. Oh, uh, okay, um, I do urge you to be careful it seems like there's a membrane from probably the woofer below it so I did kind of like push on it right now when I was lifting it up because I didn't realize that uh, but nothing serious now below that it looks like we have our charging cable now this one will be under this I am working with limited space right here, as you can probably tell why everything is so clamped up. <laughs> now, uh, that being said, I do also have the bigger boy, uh, which is the... 300. Um, so, uh, that will be even more fun to unbox in this limited space. Now, let's see if I can... Oh, there we go. So, like I said, there's the... The woofer membrane at the bottom. I have to say, I really like the design right here. It looks really good, at least in my opinion. Hmm. It's a bit wobbly. I assume this is done purposefully. Uh, it does have these rubber feet right here, as you can see. And they do have this uh, weird kind of design where they are convexed. Uh, so I think it's just kind of like wobbling because of those. And obviously that would probably be design, uh, made by design. Now, can I peel that off? There we go. And just on the tape, yunking that to the side, we have our ports at the back. So, we have an Ethernet port, we get a Type-C, we get the auxiliary, and we get power. Uh, interestingly enough, because this comes with basically every assistant built in that you can imagine, we have a neat design, which is this switch right here for the microphone. So you can actually turn microphones off and uh, feel safe that the device isn't listening to you. And as we probably can already figure out, things like Alexa don't really care about your privacy, so... Uh, usually those will be listen listening to you 24-7, so it's a nice that you have a, you have a physical uh, toggle to actually disable that. Anyway, setting that, let's plug it in. Oh, don't worry, that was my speaker turning off, a little Bose speaker that I have on the side. Uh, I did need to unplug it to actually have additional outlet for this. There we go, that's plugged in. Okay, so we do have an LED light. Let's bring up my phone so I can connect it. Okay, so that was just the booting sound All right now. Ooh, that's nice. We have a bit of lighting right here. 
Okay. So it... I do, I do have to say, I kind of like this design. It's very minimalistic. Uh, so we have just a LED ring that signifies uh, the... Uh, for this case, it is treble. So how much treble you have right here. Then you have bass and volume. Oh yeah, I really like this design. Uh, anyway, let's quickly connect it so I do need to put it in pairing mode. There we go. It shows up. Pair. Now this was basically uh, what you'd expect from pairing. Uh, very quick, no problems whatsoever. Uh, I don't have iPhone, so I assume if you probably did, it's gonna tell you that oh, you want to probably download our application, as it does have support for some kind of uh, their application. I'm not gonna bother with this, uh, as if I'm correct, it's probably going to be doing the same thing as Marshall, which give you uh, some speaker updates if they have ever uh, put out some uh, with additional controls over the bass, treble, and the volume uh, through the application, which you can do physically on the speaker itself. So for me, that's kind of redundant. And though keep in mind, I am approaching this uh, logic with the Marshall, not the JBL. So I haven't actually checked out the, uh, their application. But I do just want to have a quick lesson, so application isn't needed for that. Now, um, let's open up YouTube and... Uh, Put some Corrobrave on. Let's turn it down just in case so it doesn't blast me away. Um, okay, uh, I'm not gonna blast this like super loud right here um, because there are other people actually recording. This is just kind of like there's a bunch of uh, studios right next to each other, so don't want to like you know disturb any other people uh, that might be working around here. Um, but yeah, this uh, does sound really nice. It it feels like the bass right here is a um, more. How do I want to explain this? Uh, like I said, I'm gonna be uh, comparing this to uh, Actin three from Marshall and uh, Actin has at least uh, f didn't actually check this song specifically on the other one uh, but it seems like this one has less bass but the bass is more like precise and not so boomy the Actin has stupid amounts of bass to the point that you feel like the air is vibrating um, but sound quality might be falling off a little bit. Uh, it's not always as clear. Uh, one thing that I also find that Acton uh, fails at uh, was when listening to it, uh, you can hear precisely where the sound is coming and it just kind of feels like it's a single speaker uh, blasting at you from just a single point. It doesn't feel too great in that aspect while the bass is just filling out the entire room. Um, now right here, it, at least at the first uh, glance, it doesn't seem like that's the case right here. Um, like I said, um, I'm using the Marshall at home uh, on a daily basis. This is just kind of in a recording studio right here uh, with acoustics panels everywhere and stuff like that. So it might not be obviously a comparable um, look at both of, like you know, having a comparison between these two things. Uh, one more thing that I did notice right here is uh, the, uh, the knobs right here are kind of cool. I like the lighting. Uh, but the thing that I, for instance, from a perspective that I'm sitting right now and looking at this, I can't see basically the volume anywhere from here all the way to here. So all this is invisible to me from the uh, angle that I'm looking at, which that's not the greatest design because I literally need to either tip the speaker over to actually see the, the LED light or just, you know, put my head right over the camera to actually get a look at it. Um, 
In terms of volume wheel, uh, one more thing. Uh, by default, it's not controlling my phone's volume. So these uh, have two different uh, volume sliders. So this one is for the speaker right now and the one on the phone. That's why I was cranking up the volume on a phone at the beginning. Um, so yeah, uh, another thing, there doesn't seem to be any kind of uh, skip uh, song option. So we do have, I think, favorite, obviously the Bluetooth connection, the play and pause button right here along with the volume slider around it. Um, and then the uh, treble and bass sliders but no like next or skip forward, skip backwards options. Now, uh, I'm gonna unplug it and come on, there we go. And take a look at the back. So um, we have this plasticky, I think, yeah, I think this is plastic design right here. Uh, then at the bottom, like I mentioned, we have the feet that support it along with the base or woofer, as you can see. And then on the side, we got nothing. On the top, obviously, we already seen that for almost the entire video. And at the front, we have this uh, nice little mesh design. Now it is, uh, as you can see, uh, convex right here. So it does protrude kind of outwards like so. Um, and that's where I assume the tweeters are housed. And uh, all in all, I do have to say I really like the design. It looks classy. It has this nice little metalish, metalish ring around here that goes uh, on the front only um, with a leather-like design all around so it does look really nice and i think it would fit with most kind of room setups if you want to use this uh so yeah i do like it sound wise it seems like it's going to play fantastically after all it's a 90 watt speaker uh packaged in such a tiny little speaker now one key thing to keep in mind is this does not have a built-in battery so once unplugged that's it you you don't have the option to use it without uh, power source uh, which is the same thing for the Actin 3 that's why I was comparing them to each other um, as these size size wise they're almost identical in size uh, the only thing is this one actually puts out more wattage uh, and actually is more expensive so this speaker comes at a price of about what was it um, I don't know 400 I think yeah, about $400 um, while well, I picked up my Actin for, what was it? Wait, was it 400? Let me quickly check. $350. Okay, so this is about 350 bucks. Uh, while I picked up my uh, Actin on sale for about 170 euros. Uh, it's about the same kind of uh, conversion, give or take maybe like 10 bucks. Uh, so yeah, 170 uh, euros compared to the 100 and, or 350. This one is much, much more expensive compared. Uh, and they are basically competing with each other though. Like I said, this one has a uh, higher wattage at 90 instead of the 60. Uh, but both of them will play fantastically. Obviously, uh, this one has more power uh, and nicer design I would say actually uh, even though I really like the acting design I do feel like this one is better just personal opinion though um, so yeah both of them are fantastic and uh, next thing I'm gonna go is check out the um, the 300 version of the 200 and we'll see how that one compares uh, so yeah anyway um, I recommend picking this up if you're looking for a great speaker that that needs to be plugged in. Let's be honest, this isn't a portable speaker, really. Um, so yeah, I I recommend this one. Now, with that being said, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.